Slammiversary last night took place in Nashville, Tennessee. Impact Wrestling's big show, the big show that everyone was talking about, so much buzz around the company right now, uh, took place on pay-per-view and Fight TV. We actually did a watch long for it on this channel. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description box below if you want to go back and watch it. If you haven't watched it uh, and you're planning to and you want a bit of company, you want to have the watch long experience, be sure to check out our watch long on the channel. We will be doing one tonight for the Extreme Rules also, uh, so be also sure to check that out. Uh, but I want to talk briefly about the returns to debuts the talking points from last uh, night's show. This isn't going to be a full review or breakdown or anything like that. We're not going to grade the matches. We're not going to talk about all the matches. We're just going to talk specifically about the returns and the debuts last night. So, Because that's the thing that everyone was excited for. That's the thing that everyone was talking about going into the show, wasn't it? Who's going to show up? Who's going to return to Impact Wrestling? Who's going to make their debuts with the company? What's going to happen? Uh, and we saw quite a few things happen last night. So opening the show... We had the Rascals Open Challenge, didn't we? And now we've made a few videos on this channel talking about who it could be. And there are a lot of discussions as to who it possibly could be the ones to answer the uh, the Rascals Open Challenge. Some people thought the Good Brothers, and rightfully so, obviously. They've recently signed with the company. It was announced at midnight on July 18th that the Good Brothers had re-signed, or in Luke Gallo's case, re-signed, or Carl Anderson's case, signed with the company. Uh, and they were going to be coming to Impact Wrestling soon. So a lot of people naturally thought, well, it's going to be the Good Brothers there that we're going to have a uh, face-off against the Rascals. Some people, myself included, thought, well, that's maybe a bit too obvious. Maybe it'll be Heath Slater and Rhino. Of course, they're former SmackDown Tag Team Champions. There had been rumours that Heath Slater was going to be coming to Impact Wrestling. Some people said, what about Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, former Tag Team Champions in WWE? They also got released by the company. Their contract, their non-compete clause in their contract has expired. Uh, what about Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins? They'd been hyping up the July 18th date on their social media's uh, platforms too. So what about Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder? It wasn't them, though. Uh, it was a name that I had actually predicted. Now, I'm not going to openly say, oh, yeah, I told you the motor seat machine guns were going to be the ones to debut because I didn't say that. I did say, though, that it was a possibility and we had spoken about it here on the channel. And that's who it was. The motor seat machine guns, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley made their return to Impact Wrestling. I'd mentioned previously that uh, he, he slated that Chris Saban uh, had been working with Impact Wrestling in a producer role behind the scenes. He had uh, His contract with Ring of Honor had expired in January. He tore his AC out at that period of time. There were rumours about uh, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley teaming up at the TNA There's No Place Like Home event back in April. Of course, that was cancelled due to the pandemic that was due to happen at WrestleMania weekend. Uh, so there was a lot of discussion that they could be the ones to appear here. We haven't seen Alex Shelley uh, inside, a w inside a ring since his WWE NXT appearance with Kushida as part of the Time Splitters earlier this year. Um, and it was great to see them back. They defeated the Rascals. They look pretty good. I don't think it's the Motor City Machine Guns of old that we totally remember. I think it's a new version of them. They weren't doing all of their old classic high-flag moves because... Let's be honest, I think they need to evolve and I think they need to change and I think that's a good thing. And especially when you look at Chris Saban, when it comes to his injuries to his knee, I'm not sure if physically he can or he should be doing those sort of wrestling matches anymore. I think uh, the work that he did last night was fine and I thought their match against the Rascals was fine. Nothing too spectacular, uh, but it's what they did later on in the night that is uh, quite exciting. Uh, and that was after the North defeated uh, Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan to retain the Impact Tag Team Championships. We then have a promo and Ethan Page says that the North are the greatest tag team in Impact Wrestling history. And out comes the Motor City Machine Guns and they disagree, of course, and that uh, they don't think the North are the greatest tag team in Impact Wrestling history, despite them being Impact Tag Team Champions for over one year. And they say that they've just received word that this coming Tuesday... On Impact Wrestling, on Access TV, we will have the Motor City Machine Guns face the North for the Impact Tag Team Championship. Now, what a what a match that is. That is an absolute dream match. I spoke earlier in the watch long last night when I spoke about potentially having um, potentially having uh, the Motor City Machine Guns back in Impact Wrestling. If it was just a one-off or if it was a full-time thing, I would be really interested in seeing the Motor City Machine Guns face off against uh, against the North. I think that would be such a fun match and such an interesting match and uh, just a great match to see. So it looks like we're going to get it as early as Tuesday. Some people will say, oh, why are they hot shot in that? To get people watching. There is so much buzz about Slammiversary and there's so much buzz about the company right now. They want to get as many people watching Access TV on Tuesday nights as they possibly can. And the Motor City Machine Guns versus the North for the Impact Tag Team Championships are a way to do that. Do I think the Motor City Machine Guns are going to win? 
it's a possibility. It's a possibility. I think the North will retain, though, but we could see a screwy finish, and this could be the kickstart of a feud between them, so that is certainly a possibility. Uh, it was just great to see the Motor City Machine Guns back. We haven't heard that theme music. We haven't seen them team up in a Impact uh, ring in such a long time. I'm a big fan of their work. Going back to their matches with the likes of Team 3D, Beer Money, Generation Me, aka the Young Bucks in Impact Wrestling, they've just they've done it all. Former TNA World Tag Team Champions, they're a great tag team. They're synonymous with the history of Impact Wrestling, and just they're a massive asset to the tag team division, which looks to be expanding and exploding right now uh, in Impact Wrestling. So it's a really exciting time for the tag team division. Another name that made his debut with Impact Wrestling last night, was Heath Slater. Now, just going under the name of Heath, he made an impromptu appearance and cut a spirited promo, uh, but it was not without its share of technical difficulties. Now, at the time, on the watch along, this is when My Fight TV crashed, and I think it crashed for a lot of people. Uh, then we had issues with sound. Some people lost sound. Uh, so the Heath Slater appearance was marred by technical problems there and then even the microphone which he was using was not playing audio to the feedback home you could sort of barely hear them so the promo was difficult to hear uh, but it was one of the more compelling debuts it was kind of Scott Hall-esque in which he just sort of comes through it would be the crowd but there was no crowd jumps over the barricade uh, calls himself a free agent he only appeared of course on WWE television just 12 days ago on the July 6th broadcast of Monday Night Raw to, control, to confront WWE champion Drew McIntyre so Impact Wrestling have signed someone that was in the ring with a WWE champion uh, only 12 days ago. That's a that's a pretty big deal from Impact Wrestling's point of view. Uh, Sl Slater's segment ended with a bit of physicality when he laid out Impact Wrestling star Rohit Raju. Uh, and then Heath Slater later on in the show was be walking backstage. He reunites with former WWE tag team partner, former SmackDown tag team champion partner Rhino backstage. Uh, they're confronted by Impact executive uh, Scott Demore who says, look, we've got a lot of history here. It's great to have you here in Impact Wrestling. Uh, but Heath Slater, he's calling himself a free agent. They claim that he hasn't signed a contract with Impact Wrestling, isn't currently on the Impact Wrestling roster. They have precautions backstage because of the pandemic of people being tested. So Heath Slater is kicked out of the building by Scott Demore, which was a bit of a, a bit of an interesting segment. But of course, I don't think that Heath Slater is indeed a free agent. I think in actuality, uh, he has signed, obviously, with Impact Wrestling. He wouldn't be at the show if he hadn't signed with Impact Wrestling or hasn't at least agreed to a deal in principle or verbally or something of that effect. So Heath Slater is the latest uh, addition to the Impact Wrestling roster. I'm sure we'll see him on Tuesday as well. Impact Wrestling did actually release um, a press release and they stated that Heath Slater had been signed to Impact Wrestling was a free agent so it looks to me that they're just continuing the sort of free agent storyline that Heath Slater wanted uh, in 2016 when we had the WWE brand split whereby Heath Slater of course wasn't selected for Raw or Smackdown he was a free agent and he bounced back and forth between shows before he finally settled on Smackdown it looks to me that they'll do a similar thing here in Impact Wrestling where he'll keep appearing but he said that he hasn't been signed he's the hottest free agent and eventually he'll get a contract from Impact Wrestling uh, but it was fun to see Heath Slater on the show looks great as I mentioned a few weeks on Raw, ago on Raw, looks to be in the best shape of his life right now. Uh, cut a good promo um, on this show and cut a good promo, well, from what we heard of it, but cut a good promo on Raw the other week as well. So huge addition, in my opinion, to Impact Wrestling. I truly do believe that Heath Slater can be a major player in Impact Wrestling. I think he can be a world champion. I think it's just a matter of time. And if he gets the opportunity, which I do think he'll get in Impact Wrestling. So it's an exciting time for Heath. Now on to the main event. Main event, of course, was the Fatal 4-Way match for the Vacant Impact World Championship. We had Eddie Edwards versus Trey versus Ace Austin uh, versus a mystery opponent for the Vacant Impact World Championship, the championship vacant after Tessa Blanchard was fired from the company and stripped of the Impact World Championship. Uh, so we got revealed that the mystery opponent was none other than Rich Swan, which some people, rightfully so, were a bit like, ow. Oh. Rich Swan. Oh, oh, okay. And no slight against Rich Swan. He'd been out for since the end of last year with uh, a leg injury. He's had plates and screws and everything done to his uh, done to his leg. I think he's had two surgeries on his leg. I don't know if it's his ankle or, or or something of that effect. But he's been out since last year, and this was his return to action. So great to see Rich Swan back. But it was a little bit like, oh, really? You've been hyping up who's this mystery opponent's going to be? Who's the mystery opponent? Blah blah blah. And it was Rich Swan. Everyone was just like. You, you said it was going to be a former world champion returning and it's Rich Swan what's going on. And of course, it wasn't. they weren't going to let us down like that. It's not old school TNA. Um, it was actually Eric Young was the mystery opponent. Eric Young 
was the uh, world champion that they had been teasing. They hadn't necessarily teased the world champion for this match, but I think a lot of people thought that's what it was going to be. But it was Eric Young. Eric Young, of course, one of the names also released by WWE back in April. Former TNA World Heavyweight Champion, former Impact Wrestling icon. He has done everything with that company. He is synonymous with that company. The reason we know Eric Young and he is a name today is because of his initial run in Impact Wrestling for all of those years. He has done it all. He's been comedy. He's been serious. He's been everything. Uh, Eric Young comes out after Rich Swan and says this match is now a five-way match. Of course, initially at Slamversary, it was scheduled to be a five-way match for the uh, World Championship when Tessa Blanchard and Michael Elgin were involved. But obviously, plans change, pal. And we have Eric Young out. So we uh, have that match uh, and we have Eddie Edwards uh, become the Impact World Champion. Now, during this match, uh, Eric Young was actually the second person to be eliminated, I believe, by Rich Swan. Uh, Eric Young also sustained a cut over his eye during the match. Uh, and it's it is really interesting and fascinating, this one, because uh, we'd obviously seen all of these teases recently on Impact Wrestling about Super Eric. We had the Super Eric vignette of someone finding their costume backstage, and then Johnny Swinger would be backstage, and he found the Super Eric costume. So some people thought, oh, okay, Eric Young's coming back to Impact Wrestling, but are we getting not serious Eric Young? Are we getting goofy Super Eric Eric Young? Couldn't be further than the, from the truth. We got more than serious Eric Young. We got crazed Eric Young. This Eric Young was out of his mind. He was screaming at the top of his lungs. No beard, no hair, just totally an insane madman. He's got a cut over his eye. He gets eliminated second by Rich Swan as a shock. But what does he do? He attacks Rich Swan's surgically repaired ankle, leg, uh, and just about beats the hell out of him. He uh, traps Rich Swan's leg in a steel chair, jumps on it several times, smashes it with a steel chair, wraps um, the steel the leg around the ring post, smashes the steel chair against the get pulled off by impact officials. Uh, Eric Young just totally, totally sold this attack so well. He sold the insane madman... I don't care, pent-up frustration character so, so well. Eric Young actually did get the first elimination of this match. He hit a, a pile driver, a spike pile driver on Trey, which was just a nasty pile driver. It was awesome. To me, that looked like a pile driver, like I've been trapped for so long. I haven't done anything for so long. I've been locked in this contract with WWE for so long. And he just about bounced Trey off of the mat. It was awesome to see. And then just to top that off, um, the attack that he did on Rich Swan was just so well done, so phenomenal. And I'll be completely honest, because I said this on the on the watch along. Uh, obviously, the the Rich Swan element, people were like, oh, it's a bit of a letdown. And then Eric Young, it was like, okay, that's cool. But people wanted it to be EC3. I don't want to say that Eric Young felt like a letdown when we saw him, but it was kind of like, eh, maybe it could have done a bit better. But Eric Young, for me, more than made up for it. His attack on Rich Swan was just that good. Uh, and credit to Rich Swan as well. Rich Swan absolutely sold the hell out of that ankle injury. He's crying. He's slapping the mat. Don Callis was great on commentary during it as well. He's saying, uh, after being out for all this time, having plates and screws put in your leg, after having two surgeries, you come back to make your in-ring return in a world championship match at Slammiversary, and it's taken away from you and ruined by this madman who attacks you with a steel chair just because you beat him. Just really good storytelling, really good storytelling. Eric Young saying to Rich Swan, I'll see you soon. So we're going to have an Eric Young versus Rich Swan feud going forward, which on paper isn't something you'd be you know, totally thrilled with or totally excited with. But if you watch that Slammiversary main event between uh, all of these guys and you saw that angle that they shot between Eric Young and Rich Swan, that turned heads. For me, it certainly opened up my eyes as to Okay, this is what Eric Young has to offer Impact Wrestling now. We aren't going to see comedic Eric um, Young. We're going to see crazed, insane, heel Eric Young, which, to be honest, we haven't seen much of in Impact Wrestling. We've seen the underdog babyface. We've seen the uh, the baby sort of more serious babyface. We've seen the comedic babyface. He has been a heel before. He was a heel, a serious heel with World Elite back in 2009. But even then, it was a sort of... I don't know, more business-like, serious uh, heel. Whereas this one is just a crazed madman. It's a bit of a take on his time in NXT with Sanity, right? Whereby it's just this insane, loose cannon. Uh, and I'm sure they'll tap into his WWE run here when they say, so much frustration, I've been outcasted. My dream was taken away from me. So I'm going to take away the dream of someone else in Rich Swan. I think that's the storyline that they can go with for this one. And that's just, to me, that's really exciting. I think I'm fascinated now, absolutely fascinated to see what they do with this Eric Young character. I think he's just, 
in about 20 minutes just became more relevant than he'd been in about five years. It was just that good. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have Eddie Edwards win the match, which was a surprise. I thought Ace Austin was going to win this one and become the youngest world champion in Impact Wrestling history. I thought this would facilitate uh, the introduction of the Aces and Eights, but it wasn't the case. Eddie Edwards wins, becomes the Impact World Champion for the second time in his career. Ace Austin and his big heavy attack, uh, Eddie Edwards after the match, which of course leads to the Good Brothers making their debut with Impact Wrestling as well. We'd expected this to happen. We knew that they'd signed with Impact Wrestling, as I mentioned before. They announced it at midnight, Impact Wrestling did, and they showed him inside the Impact Arena there in Nashville, Tennessee. So we knew they were going to be at Slammiversary, but as the time was ticking on, it was kind of like, well, where are they going to show up? What's going to happen? So the Good Brothers come out. I really enjoy their their entrance music. I think it's great. They look like complete stars, just way more stars than they ever did in WWE in about five minutes. And I don't mean to come across as this WWE basher of, oh, they've already come like stars because they're out. But they did. They felt like proper stars and they felt like big stars. Even in an empty arena, it felt like a big deal and a big moment for Impact Wrestling and Gallows and Anderson. So as they're walking down the ramp, Gallows slips which I thought was just hilarious. That like I've got such a childish sense of humour like that. People tripping and slipping up always makes me laugh anyway. <laughs> but Luke Gallo slipped on the entrance ramp. Uh, it looked quite slick. He was wearing like cowboy boots and he, and he slips slightly, sort of stumbles, which is even more funny. Like someone falling over is funny, but the sort of slight sort of stumble to me is even more funny. So he did that and you could see Gallows. He started biting his tongue and he's biting his cheek because he's tried his best not to laugh because he's like oh my god we've just had a big moment and I literally fell on my ass during it it was hilarious so they get in the ring and Ace Austin is there with his heavy and you got Gallows and Anton staring off and they're teasing you know you're going to join in you're going to help us you're going to beat the hell out of Eddie Edwards here and some people thought is this going to be the reformation of Aces and Eights that we've been uh, know is going to happen eventually is this going to be the rumour of course Ace Austin he's got Ace in his name he could be the leader of the Aces and Eights right um, but it wasn't the case it wasn't the case uh, Gallows and Anson fought them off uh, and then we had Gallows and Anson share a bill with Eddie Edwards to seemingly end the show there um, but we had one more surprise left of course a lot of fans and this was the case in the watch along a lot of fans were waiting for EC3 they wanted EC3 myself included to be the fourth and final man in that uh, initial fatal four-way match for the Impact World Championship it wasn't the case and we were starting to say well Maybe EC3 was right. He said he put a tweet out after he posted the narrative video saying, he, I'm not going to have a fight on July 18th. And he was right. He didn't have a fight. Uh, you thought the show was ending and then bang, you see the EC3 logo come on the screen. You see EC3 turn around, uh, throw, I believe, a glass against the wall. He looked angry and screams. Uh, and then that's it. So EC3, it is confirmed, has signed, re-signed with Impact Wrestling. Uh, and it was just a great way to end the show. That's, for me, how you hook people in to watch Tuesday on Access TV. Uh, you go, oh my God, EC3 is indeed coming back. Big signing, the right signing for Impact Wrestling and the right signing for EC3. Some people were saying, oh, I wish he'd have gone to AEW. Not a chance. I just think he'd get lost in the shuffle and Impact Wrestling has so much buzz right now and coming out of Slammiversary. Look, Slammiversary last night was trending number one in the US, trending worldwide. Uh, maybe not number one, but it was trending worldwide and certainly trending one number one in the States. When's the last time that's happened with Impact Wrestling? When's the last time an Impact Wrestling show did that? Why? Because there is buzz about the company right now. There is buzz about that event. People are excited. People are excited to see all of these names, names come back or debut of Impact Wrestling. And people are going to say, well, they're just WWE rejects. If you say that they're WWE rejects, then you don't know anything about professional wrestling. The reason that they were let go from WWE is because they weren't being used properly by WWE. These are super, super talented people. You can't tell me that Heath Slater, Eric Young, Luke Gallows, Carl Anton and EC3 aren't names that could be used well by WWE or could have done more in WWE. They absolutely could. And they have talent and they have potential. And even in the past, they've shown it. They just never got the break that they deserve. And Impact Wrestling is giving that break to them. EC3 didn't even say a word. But the, the way they ended the show with the turn and the, his look and his anger and his... Just that moment, in 10 seconds, again, like with Gallows and Anton, in 10 seconds, EC3 felt immediately more relevant, more important, uh, a bigger star than he had during his entire WWE run that time. 
his entire WWE run. And again, that's not me being, oh, I'm a WWE basher. I don't anyone that when they come out of WWE is a big star. No, it, it just it's the presentation. It's the presentation. And EC3 was pre- presented really well. The Good Brothers were presented really well. Eric Young, for me, an absolute brilliant performance. One of the best performances on the show. Just showed all of his experience in getting that angle over. Rich Swan, tremendous. Sold his behind off during the attack. It was great, and it was a great show. I thought it was. It wasn't perfect. It had quite a few production issues at certain points. As I mentioned, Fight TV crashed, and we had issues with the house marks. We had issue with replays. Uh, but I'd say overall, Impact Wrestling did a great job. Slammiversary was a great show. I saw some people on social media saying, well, you hyped it up as a, a night of surprises and returns and it was underwhelming. And I see that and I'm like, what are you talking about? I saw a, a report, an article online earlier as I was doing the research for this video. And they went, well, it was um, EC3 tops off a night of underwhelming returns and debuts for Impact Wrestling. I was like, are you serious? Seriously? You had five there, five surprises slash returns. What more do you want? Like, seriously, what more do you want? Do you want every single segment to have a surprise or a return? Because that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm sure Impact Wrestling have got more in their back pocket, as they should. People are saying, what about Aces and Eights? Would have been great to see Aces and Eights on last night's show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I made a couple of videos about it on this channel. Did they have to appear last night? No. Because why tell the whole story straight away? If Gallows and Anton are indeed going to be part of Aces and Eights, do we really need to see it last night? We know that a lot of people are going to be watching Impact on Access TV on Tuesday. Maybe that's the time to do it. Maybe that's the time because not only have you got a buzz for Slammiversary and people will buzz for Slammiversary, but it's how do you keep this buzz going? You do that by doing good shows and you do that by making big things happen on your TV show. So why not have Aces and Eights return on Tuesday on Impact on Access TV? How about that for a show closing angle? The show closing shot of Slammiversary is EC3. The show closing shot of Impact on Tuesday is the Aces and Eights return. That wouldn't be too bad at all. That wouldn't be too bad at all. Uh, some people say, what about Mike Bennett? Mike Bennett, to me, looked to be in like a hotel room uh, in his post on social media. He's been hyping up the July 18th date. We didn't see him last night. Realistically, though, where would he have fit on that show? Could he have been the mystery opponent? Yes. But the mystery opponent, it looks like the plan was never for them to win that match. Would I have had Mike Bennett come into lose straight away? I don't think so. In Impact Wrestling history, he's considered a big name. He's the miracle, former X Division champion. We saw Chris Bay win the X Division championship last night from Willie Mack in what I thought was a really good match. Why not have Chris Bay? You know, he has a promo this week on Impact Wrestling. You have Mike Bennett come out there with Maria. That's a fun way to do it. And as I just mentioned, that's a way to continue the buzz that we already have coming out of Slammiversary. People are going to be talking about Slammiversary for the next couple of days, but it's how do you keep this momentum going? How do you keep this momentum up post Slammiversary? We know Bound for Glory is in October. That's a long way away now. So between now and then, we have to keep this momentum going if you're Impact Wrestling. You have to keep this going. The reason this had so much momentum is obviously because of the good work that Impact Wrestling have been doing recently with their shows. And I say recently, for the last few years, to be honest, but obviously because of the hype about which people are going to be debuting, which people are going to be returning to the company, you don't want to blow it all in one night because where is your momentum then? If you steadily, over the next couple of weeks, spread out these returns and spread out these debuts with the company and tell a story with them, whether it is Aces and Eights and new people showing up and they're all going to be part of an Aces and Eights reveal later on down the line, that's a good way to do it. Whether it is going to be EC3 and his potential stable, the narrative, that's going to be a good way to do it. Whether it's going to be an Aces and Eights versus an EC3 storyline of the narrative. We saw EC3 interrupt Gallows and Anderson there with Eddie Edwards. Perhaps EC3 stable, the narrative, feuds with Gallows and Anderson stable in the Aces and Eights. There's a lot to do here. There's a lot to do here and a lot of story to tell. And for people to say that that might have been underwhelming, I just disagree entirely because... You, you can't you can't do it all in one night. You can't. And I thought Impact Wrestling did a great job of sowing a lot of seeds. You know, it, if anything, it wasn't a night for paying things off. They they hyped it up as a as a show that was meant to be the start of a new chapter. You don't start up a new book. If you start a new chapter and then the ending is on the very next page, what story have you told there? No story is told like that. This was the beginning. This was the seeds being planted. This was a glimpse to where we're going in the future. But you can't tell them exactly where you're going because there's no story there and there's no surprise. 
So I thought that all the returns were done really, really well. I'll, for one, be watching Impact on Tuesday because there is so much going to be going on there, whether it is the Motor City Machine Guns versus the North, whether it is Heath maybe making another appearance of Impact Wrestling, whether it is the follow-up angle between Eric Young and Rich Swan, whether it is Gallows and Anderson making their uh, Impact debut appearance uh, on the TV show, whether it is, are we actually going to see EC3 in the arena? Is he going to confront Gallows and Anderson? Uh, are we going to see Aces and Eights? Could we see more returns like Mike Bennett and Maria coming to Impact Wrestling? Uh, are we going to see Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins? Perhaps they get involved in the Tag Team Championship match on Tuesday with the Motor City Machine Guns and the North. There is so much that could still happen. That is the really exciting thing for Impact Wrestling. If I'm coming out of Slammiversary last night going, that's great, but now I don't care, that's a problem. I care massively now. I'm more invested than I was before because I still think there is more to happen here. And I'm interested to see in what, in what they go with all of these storylines and these directions with these characters. So great show. As I mentioned, we did a watch long for it. The link is in the description box below. We'll be doing a watch long for Extreme Rules as well tonight. So I'll put a, a link to that in the description box as well. So I've got the stream set up. So be sure to join us for that. Um, what were your thoughts? Well, of course, it's just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Slammiversary last night? What did you think of the matches? What did you think of the returns, the debuts, the Motor City Machine Guns, Heath Slater, Rich Swan, Eric Young, Gallows and Anderson, EC3? Did you enjoy it? Or do you think, like some of these people said, it was underwhelming? Where do you think they'll go next? Do you think we'll see the Aces and Eights? Do you think we'll see Mike Bennett soon? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond to all of your comments and interact with you where I can. I really enjoy chatting with you guys on this channel. It's all about opinions on this channel. It's all about discussion in pro wrestling, sharing your opinion and having no judgment for sharing it. That's what professional wrestling should be all about. Be sure to give us a like on this video. Uh, the more likes we get, the higher we go up in the recommendations feed. So I really appreciate that. Uh, be sure to share with your friends if you enjoyed this video also. And most importantly, be sure to give us a subscribe. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. We're closing in on 500 subscribers. We're about 20 subscribers at the time of recording off. Uh, so once we get to 500 subscribers, subscribers will be halfway on the road uh, to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, once we get to 1,000, we can start doing a lot more watch alongs and live content on this channel. It's just a lot easier to do that from a streaming point of view. Uh, so the quicker we get there, uh, we can uh, start doing all of that. But everyone that has subscribed or is new to the channel or is new to watching this, I really appreciate all of your support. We've seen so much growth in the subscriptions over the last couple of weeks. It's been insane. So thank you. Thank you so, so much for that. Uh, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms if you haven't already. It's at 365 Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle News 365 on Facebook and Instagrams. The links are in the description box for that too. Uh, thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.